Yeah, hey, start the recording before I forget to do that, because I always tend to. Nice. Looking good. Look at you. Oh, you just got my hair cut. Yeah. That, you're, good, uh, I'll take it. yeah, you're, uh, no, you look like in your face too, look like you're slimming down. You've been, uh, yeah, don't lie to me. No, I'm serious. You look good. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. So how is everything? How's life? Life's good, man. Uh, done some changing, actually left my organization last Friday, which I, you know, happened pretty quick down at a dealership started on Monday. Oh, so you broke up there. So, but the gist of it is you left your, uh, where you were working and you're starting a new job in Watertown on Monday. Oh, you're frozen. I already still. started. Yeah. Two days ago I started. Now, oh, geez, I know I, oh, there, there we go. See if that works. Is that better? Yeah. There we go. You good? Yeah. Is it working? Seems to be. I don't know. What was it? Now you got it going through your phone? We'll just have to edit it. Yeah, it's on going through my phone. No, no, no. I didn't know if you had it going through the car now still or what you're doing, but I seem to be able to hear you. Oh, yeah. Your your audio is. I don't know if my audio is, but yours is. Gotcha. So are you moving back yep, to Watertown, yeah. it sounds like? Well, yeah, I'll be spending most of my time there. Uh, I still have an apartment in Syracuse, Canastota. I'm all over the place, but yeah, I'll be staying with my parents. Gotcha. Yeah, you're. Uh, you spend you spend a lot of time on the road. It seems kind of commuting between the two. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm all over the place, you know, and with uh with everything that's been, you know, it's going on, and, and then uh, just my daughter lives in Syracuse. I, I'm just I'm all over the place. You know? Gotcha. Now uh, I understand why you're kind of so attached to having the place in Syracuse and staying there. So yeah, yeah, my girl—that's where my girlfriend. Nice. So uh, the main reason for this call is I heard you're starting a uh, new team. Yes, that happened quickly too. Um, ironically, during the same time period of me getting an opportunity to go home, which is funny, it's not related. So what I wanted to do originally was just help start a team or help put the right people together to be able to start a team in the north. And, uh, you know, I just started looking into it. And then all of a sudden I had, I had all this stuff that I was just going to give to someone else or, or work with someone else to do. And then I make calls. And then the more you get involved with it, it's like, man, I don't know if any of I want to do this. I don't know if I want someone else to be able to do it. So I, I talked to Necker and said, hey, man, I think I'm going to do this. Um, my original plan was to continue playing for Utica, you know, this spring and summer. And now I'm like, well, I might just do this whole thing myself. So wish me luck. And then I called the league and the league's very interested and they would love a team up there. And Watertown, unfortunately, they only have one ice arena and the fail of Billard. So I was like, oh, no, no. what am I going to do? Some gentleman commented on Facebook that the town of Alex Bay put turf in at a recreation arena um, in their town. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I reached out to them. I met with them, the town, and they're really excited. And we're, that's the quick formation of the Thousand Islands Box Lacrosse Club. Um, I entered my DBA on Friday. I'm going to do that this week. And just ha happened really quick, man. I went from having an idea of having a team to, well, guess I'm starting a team. Here we are. Yeah, that's uh, that's so cool. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure Paul was thrilled because it just means more people are going to be able to uh, play box lacrosse, which – is really all he cares about right now is uh spreading the game but let's um talk for a little bit so when you say watertown uh very close to watertown you have a town called carthage which i knew of not even as a lacrosse player but somehow yep. uh my buddy's grandparents lived there and we went and played and everybody was like oh my goodness the powells the powells the powells and i was like who yeah. are the powells and then when i learned what lacrosse was later in life i was like oh so that's the powells and uh yep. it's kind of funny that there's no real box um in the area there's no presence at all um you know growing up we would play indoor and when you're young and you don't know what box is, you know, they called it box, but uh, it wasn't. So when I was very young, like elementary school, I didn't play lacrosse then. But there was an actual box league in Watertown at the ice on concrete for younger people. My cousin, I had a couple older cousins that played. Um, I don't know how many years that league went on, but they did that in the summers, which was great. Um, and that was for youth. And I'm sure there was men too. I don't really know. I was too young. Um, but that went away and it never came back. And then the other issue with Watertown itself um, is that the only indoor facility in town is a YMCA. And at the YMCA, unfortunately, can't. Uh, there's no contact. So modified rule. And it's, since it's the only place in town, it's very difficult to get turf time. It's difficult to... Like, we can't even host weekly 
pickup session there because it's the, the logistics of it. it's the only place so there's a lot of people in that area that are underserved especially in the winter time for field time there's nothing that's the only facility um and what's great about alex bay is that they they got the turf last summer for for soccer and they're highly considering um they haven't made this decision yet i don't think but they're highly considering leaving the turf down all year so this is actually big for the area because it's going to give people another play to play indoor all year long this year they're doing ice so they just put the ice down like a week and a half ago um but next winter they're going to leave the turf down all year so that gives us an opportunity to play when they put the turf down in March and continue playing from now on, which is awesome for the area. So part of what I'm doing besides the teams, that's the initial plan um, is the team for this summer. Uh, And I'm going to do some, we're going to do clinics. And then with that, we're going to try to do more clinics and then maybe weekly, you know, open runs for, for younger, you know, for youth in high school. We're definitely going to do it for men right off the jump um, with a goal of next summer of actually having a youth box across the Thousand Islands region, which is awesome. Like there's a lot of good lacrosse players that have come from there between Carthage and Watertown, um, General Brown, where I went, South Jeff. There's been a lot of high level talent to come from that area and they never even played box when they were young or didn't have the opportunity like these kids are going to now. So I'm super excited to be able to to help do that. Like, you know, and I told Paul, you're my inspiration. What you're trying to do in Utica is going to be great. Um, and I think I'll have the same level of support in Watertown, Alex Bay, that, that whole region in the North Country. Um, so it's just really exciting opportunity. It's all I can think about. You know, it's hard not to think about anything like i'm just sitting here thinking of ideas we can make this work you know and that's i can't my mind doesn't stop yeah and that's really uh what it takes though is people like you people like paul who just say you know what i'm doing it and you just kind of grab the bull by the horns and uh jump into it now i actually played up there as a uh as a kid i played for a uh, bonnie castle tournament team yeah yep and there's a center there um this this one so this facility that we're using is right in town in alex bay right across from the high school okay that's yeah. awesome so bonnie castle still i don't know if they still have that arena or not um they might i, I have no idea I it's been yeah it's been a know. long time since i've been out that way i just always find it funny how like all these little towns and you, you come back to and then you meet somebody like you yeah. and uh next thing you know we're talking about you starting a team out there and it's uh yeah it's awesome Hockey's pretty big up there. So like, you know, and so Thousand Islands, um, they started a lacrosse program. 2006. Yeah, 2006. Um, I remember because my friend was the head coach of the varsity team. I was actually going to coach modified. I got my coach's license. I went through the whole thing. And then the job I had at the time was like, hey, you have to go to L.A. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, Louisiana. That's because we use state codes a lot to describe where we're going. And they're like, no, 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 Los Angeles. So I was like, what? Oh. So like uh, that was their first year of having a team, and then I had to get shipped out to L.A. Um, to work. So I missed out on being able to coach and be a part of that. Um, but Thousand Islands, I think, they have a pretty strong youth program, and they're hockey players already. So I think that area will really enjoy box lacrosse once they get to see it and experience it. So the town and the area is pretty excited. There's been a lot of interest already. I have uh, Google Forms on our page for guys in the area if they're interested in wanting to be a part of it, whether it be, you know, when we do pick up or when we you know because we'll be able to start playing sometime in march so they can start playing i plan on having tryouts in april trying to pick the team and everything you know pretty quickly at the beginning of may so we can order stuff and be ready for a season in june july yeah it all uh seems to happen way faster than you think when you're trying to plan this stuff out it just kind of like boom 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 next thing you know you're here yeah yeah i'm gonna need sponsors so that's gonna be the next thing um and i still have to pick a name so like i i got it down to like five different um, i'm gonna announce on the radio actually i'm going on the radio tomorrow it's gonna um recorded but it's gonna be um i think played next monday morning around 8 15 8 8 20 on tunes 92 5 which is the local station in watertown and i'm gonna announce the team name then um, pretty much have a decision made. It's down to five teams or five names, so that'll be fun. All right, all right so Tunes ninety two point five. I, <clears throat> I probably. What time are they gonna run it? Um, I think they because it's on their morning show. That's at ten a.m. But they, I think they said eight fifteen, eight twenty on Monday morning. They're gonna post whatever we talk about tomorrow. Um, I go on tomorrow, it gets recorded. And what I'm going to do every day is I'm going to post on Facebook the, the five names remaining, then four, then three, then two. And then next Monday, I'll announce 
the, the name of the team on the radio. So that'll be a fun lead in. And then uh, I have someone, you know, working on potential logo designs for different team names because, you know, th- there's five of them that I've from that I've chosen. I, I have all that stuff posted. on the uh, Facebook page, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I've taken like picking a name is hard. That's yeah, hard. yeah. It's tough too because you don't want to. I mean, just with our little uh, Instagram page that we run, kind of with this YouTube, has been a uh, yeah. We've challenged, changed it quite a few times from what it was initially called. And when you do a yeah. team and you order jerseys, it's not really the same thing. You can't just kind of stick with something no. for a couple of days and then all of a sudden it's like, oh wait, that was a way better idea. Yeah, that's why. Like I've put a lot of thought into this. We've had suggestions. Um, the five. So no matter what, we're going to be called Thousand because that encompasses the whole. Um, so that's why we're going to stick with that. Um, you know, the town really liked that. I like that. And that's great. Cause that is the region thousand islands is that whole area. It also encompasses Canada too. So the, the that side of the, like, so Alex Bay is right on the board. Um, it's right on the river on um, the border of Canada is right in the middle. So, you know, location wise, we're close to some of the best box lacrosse there is. And then, uh, Aquasasne is only 90s away. Um, you know, so those guys would have the opportunity if they're not playing in Can-Am or, or anything that they're playing in up there in the summer. Um, it's not a far drive to Alex Bay. It's nine, nothing, you know, a lot of guys, as you know, have driven three, four hours to play. Um, so 90 minutes is like a short jaunt. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, lacrosse players will pretty much drive wherever they need to, to play. And I think the big thing is going to be for you you'll see like once you get the youth program going just their kids being able to play against the aquasasne kids and having teams that you can play against these uh the prop like the thing with these programs is is you're probably going to start a uh you know you've got the nabll team coming but like you said it's more about building a uh community base and you don't really see the um i guess the the end result or the goods or the product for like you know five to ten years as you're building up the youth program it's uh it's awesome you're willing to put the time in because once you kind of get those set in place they tend to kind of run themselves with parents they can coach and kind of step in and do things but it's uh it's a lot of work and uh i'm sure a lot of people are happy that you're taking the initiative to set it up yeah i'm definitely gonna need help uh you know certainly gonna need to find um the right people that are willing and able um you know at first to help however they can on a volunteer basis and um you know because you know, I don't have boatloads of money to be paying people, and hopefully we can generate some income where it can become self-sufficient for itself, um, because I just want to be able to provide the opportunity. Um, I don't want to, it's a business, I guess, at the end of the day, um, but my goal is build box across and give opportunity for kids to play that haven't had an opportunity to play that have played indoors thinking they know what box lacrosse is but really don't know what it is and it's a different game and as you've learned um it's it's something that once you experience it it's very hard pressed to find something else that gives a feeling or the same tone of the game you know yeah it's uh it's crazy i just was down talking to the um guy uh matt johnson he got drafted by the new england chowderheads there for the pbla yeah it he is awesome I, this was my first chance he was close enough that i was able to actually drive down there and talk to him it was really cool but uh we talked for basically three hours we probably are only going to be able to play like you know 20 minutes a half hour of it on the podcast just because it yeah. was he's such a cool guy but we talked a lot about the difference between um so like you started playing box uh about how long has it been now? It's been a few years, but you didn't start playing when you were young because you didn't even no. play lacrosse when you were young. No, no. So, yeah, 2014 was the first time I played box lacrosse, like real box lacrosse. Yeah, and at that point, you were already, uh, you know, not old. Right, you were past your, yeah. like, you know, and college playing. Yeah. <laughs> yep i was turning 31 right so you were past your college play in prime giving this opportunity to these kids like there's such a difference in the speed of your stick and the uh creativity of the game that's needed in box lacrosse that you don't necessarily always see in the field because you can just have a super fast athlete who blows by everybody super big defenders who are there to push guys out and wear box everybody's so tight and it's so fast pace you have yeah. to be creative and you've got big goalies with little opportunities to score, like the stick skills and box. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what separates us playing at the uh, national levels, like in field lacrosse, you know, the, the kids that play box growing up and then switch to field lacrosse in high school or college have a huge advantage compared to those kids who played 
field lacrosse growing up and then try to get into box lacrosse. For sure, yeah. We've talked about that before. And it just box translates a lot um, as far as like the skills um, that you can develop. So what's exciting about providing this opportunity able to is that these kids not only become better box lacrosse players, but their stick skill will make them better lacrosse player um, from playing box, transitioning that to field. Just like you said, the quickness, the speed, the short distances, um, just accuracy. Accuracy, passing the ball, because in box you can't afford to make a mistake. Um, and, and shooting, obviously shooting on a smaller goal. So what's cool about Alex Bay is they already have 4x4 four four goals. They already purchased them because they just saw professional box across goals and they thought that was the right size. Um, and I was like, fortunately, no, that'll be great for the youth program. Uh, we're going to have to get bigger goals for us, but we'll, we'll do that. Um, so that we're already set up already, which is off. The only thing we got to do is paint some line do that in the spring when uh, everything's going down. Yeah. Yeah. So it's super exciting. I bet. Now, one of the other uh, the big advantages, I think, to box that gets uh, overlooked a lot is the the rebound. I mean, it's really what separates. I was talking to Matt about it on the, uh, actually, as I was driving back home, the ability to scramble or like you say, if you don't hit the net, it's not just, okay, whoever's the closest player is going to get possession. So I know I can have somebody sitting there and I can rip a yeah. shot super fast. And I know if I miss the top right corner, it's not a big deal as long as I don't throw it into goalie's chest. Well, it's completely different in box because if you bounce that off the plexiglass at 100 miles an hour, now you're giving the possession automatically to the other team with an over and back if you guys can't control the the rebound. Yeah, and if you shoot, like that's the thing is you have to put it on goal um, because if you don't, then it's a fast break the other way. You, know, you have to be ready at all times. So like this will just improve the, their overall skills, your overall awareness. They'll get way better at ground balls. Like it's crazy what box can do. Like it's made me, you know, I was a decent player as it is, but just playing this more made me and improved my stick skills to a point that I had not, you know, my, I've always been known for having some stick, but box made it way better, like way better than I ever thought I self because nothing can prepare you for it. You know, just playing the game is, is hugely important. And to be able to provide this for kids, what I'm most excited about getting the youth in there, getting high school students in there, um, getting men the opportunity to play besides just playing summer league um, that don't get to play all year round. So like next winter is going to be great just to be able to play all year. Like just the opportunity to have lacrosse in your life the whole year and not just the summer is going to be awesome. And then the ability to put together and actually be able to compete this summer um, is exciting. You know, I've had a lot of interest and I've, I've had interest from guys that I haven't played lacrosse. So I can't wait till all the other guys hearing this and getting it, want to be part of it and start filling out the forms showing interest you know i don't know we can definitely put in a pretty competitive team and i know the talent here can be taught the game um and there's probably a lot of guys that have played that are up here that, you know, that secretly play and don't even tell anybody you know that maybe they've traveled and played in tournaments that i don't yeah i think uh i think you really were touching on the biggest thing is going to be the um being able to keep your stick in your hand all year and just the amount of uh ground balls like you said scooping up ground balls just how many more ground balls you get having that rebound and having the goalie with the big pads and making yeah. the defense, you know, it's, it's different with a long pole when you can reach six out, in, you know, six foot out in front of you. But when you're both hit with the same stick all the time, it, it makes it completely different. And with the uh, fast shot clock, 30 second shot clock, you got to make quick decisions. Yeah. Don't mind me. I got to walk. Um, but yeah, so like that's, that's just super exciting, man. I, I can't wait to have it all figured out. You know, definitely going to need some help. I need some sponsors, so if anybody's watching, call me. Uh, but yeah, so we'll announce the team name this this week. Um, if you haven't seen it on there, the the teams I was picking, cho choosing from uh, the brigade, br brigade is one brigade. Um, that's cool because it has a military touch to it, and the bridge is there too. The Thousand Islands Bridge is obviously famous for that region. Um, and the military thing is something I was hoping to kind of keep part of it. One was the Crusader. I think that's a cool name. Um, what was the other names? Thunder has been a, a favorite. People like Thunder. Uh, Spirit. And why can I not forget? I can't remember the other name I had on there. Okay, I remember. There's another. <laughs> so that one's probably not going to make the cut then. What's that? I said that one's probably not going to make the cut then. <laughs> yeah, isn't that bad? I can't remember. Well, also, I'm multiple one dog. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Facebook is where everybody has to find all this information, right? Yes. If you go to right now, I have it titled NABLL Thousand Island. That's what it's titled right now on Facebook. Um, and then obviously mine, but that's where you can find all that stuff. And I'm going to keep everyone as posted as I can. Uh, 
the radio shows next Monday. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's just gotcha. here and out to 100 miles per hour, just trying to figure out everything. Six months can go by quickly. Oh, five months. Wait, no, four months. Holy cow, it's November. Yeah. You know, it time flies. You ain't kidding. Well, as always, it was awesome talking with you. I wish yeah, you man. nothing but the best. We're going to, uh, I'm going to cut this part out. We're just going to say goodbye now. So goodbye. Hey, great talking to you. See you, buddy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs>